full disclaimer. <clears throat> so as, uh, as I pause, uh, we're hosting these vendors demonstrations to increase uh, state and local emergency management agencies' awareness of vendor products and IPALS capabilities. This webinar provides an overview of the interoperability of these systems with IPALS Open and will include vendor presentations of their products. Uh, FEMA's IPALS Program Management Office encourages and facil facilitates this discussion of products and tools, but it does not endorse any specific vendor's products. This webinar is for educational purposes only. Okay, so with that said, who is our uh, vendor today? And that's Desktop Alert. Uh, from Desktop Alert, we have Howard and Gary on the, uh, on the webinar today. Uh, Gary is going to be doing uh, the demo. I think Howard's gonna start with a bit of an introduction, um, but we'll get right to it. And so with that, uh, Howard, did you, did you have anything you wanted to say? Yes, thank you very much, Justin. My name is Howard from Desktop Alert. Uh, Desktop Alert is a uh, enterprise level mass notification platform introduced initially to the Department of Defense in 2007. And from those early beginnings, our software has been deployed at government, uh, Department of Defense, municipalities, schools, um, and, and corporate uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, most recently, we've been selected uh, as the mass notification vendor for all 30 NATO nations, those deployments are underway. Uh, we have been working with FEMA for several years. We're very happy to be participating today. Uh, Gary Bergner will be giving a short uh, demonstration of our platform. Our platform can be uh, installed remotely. We've got over 700 installs at government locations worldwide without ever having to have an on-site engineer. Our platform is computer agnostic, and it runs on any organization's existing computational infrastructure on-premise or in the cloud. And we also provide what we call a hybrid installation for organizations with special requirements that concatenate both the cloud and on-premise for uh, delivering alerts to all modalities. Additionally, we are certified. We are the only American company certified uh, by the Department of Defense to run on every single <clears throat> government uh, uh, computer network. And that leads all the way up to top secret uh, government networks. So that is a boon for our company when um, an organization wants to interrogate our security credentials and it kind of greases the wheel for moving forward uh, and, and garnering the uh, acceptance of your network uh, security officials. That being said, I'm gonna go ahead and pass the baton to Gary Bergner and we're gonna jump right into it. Thank you. Thanks, Howard. So Gary, I'm gonna pass you presenter privileges and there is one camera that's on today and that's the camera uh, with the lighthouse right now. That's at the IPAWS lab in National Harbor, Maryland. Uh, Kiara Clark has joined us from the iPods lab. She will confirm receipt of the message. Uh, we will see it scrolling across the screen. Uh, we, we will probably hear it on the EAS devices at the iPods lab. And then Kiara will show us the message viewer uh, just for an additional confirmation of receipt of the test message. Uh, so Gary, you do have uh, presenter privileges now, so uh, feel free to screen share. Awesome, thank you. Okay, we should be seeing my console. Yes, sir, good to go. Okay, so this is an admin point of view on an iPoise instance of Desktop Alert. I can see the settings here. So I will go in here to manage my iPoise license settings. When it's first licensed, we'll walk you through as the vendor, very easy. You'll come to your main settings, You'll enter your COG numbers, your certificates, and that will certify it for the system. Uh, you can preset some areas within your COG. If you know you're gonna be sending out routine areas and circles and polygons, you can preset those. Uh, you can preset templates where the whole alert is ready to go. Just hit send. Uh, we could also connect to neighboring COGs 
and send it out as a regular desktop alert community if a neighboring cog sends an alert. And here is where you can grant permissions for people to have access to the iPoS tab, which you see up here. So I'm going to do that. So let's say this is a user that just joined our organization. I'll go in and I'll check the green checkbox. Are you sure you want to grant permissions to this user? Say yes, it says granted. So now FEMA demo has access. So I'll sign out. And now if I'm a, a user who just is assigned to send out these alerts, we'll see what the screen looks like. So this is what my screen looks like as just an iPause operator. You can see the home tab, iPause alert history. So if I want to send an iPause alert, pretty straightforward, I just click on iPause. I come here and a few things we'll go over is, okay, I'm in training mode. That's very clear to our uh, customers. We want to make sure they know they're in training mode. If they want to go to production mode, they just click on that. We'll get a clear uh, prompt. You are switching to iPoas Live. If they know they want to do that, they click OK. And it will go into live mode. And there you go. So now as the operator, before I even do anything, pretty sure I'm in live mode by the pulsating red button. Uh, you can also manage your, your COG permissions. You click here and you can exactly see what you've been authorized for. And that's basically those indicators. Now I just go, let's go right to an alert. So you can either click on new alert or one of your templates. So if I'm going to build an alert from scratch, I'll click on new alert. Gary, let's switch back to iPaul's training mode. I know, I know we don't have permissions for iPaul's live, but that's good just. Good call. Let's not. Good call. Good call. Yeah. And that's why it said off. We don't want. We're, yeah, off. we're not sending to any prod when, on these demo sites. Only the customer will have that right. So good call. All right. So we're in training mode. So now you see the event types. These are all pre-configured from from FEMA. So it's exactly what they want here, the symbols and all that. So you, as an operator, you can go through. I live in Colorado. That's probably be a typical one. So, and what auto populates by FEMA's requirements is the channels that can go out via that event type. So avalanche warning can go out via these three types. I can uncheck them if I want to. I don't want to send that to the phones. For whatever reason, I can do that. I can uncheck it. But by default, all three are approved. Then by default also, we've uh, defaulted to the uh, properties, the urgency, the severity, and the certainty. And you can see that's chosen. You could choose the other ones if you want, but you can't choose these based on what you've chosen previously. So that's all intuitively built. Here you could come in, and this is where you'll need to put your own choices. And then next, it also defaults again. You'll notice I can't choose these, but I can choose these. I go next, I can override the expiration. One hour is the uh, expected time frame of this, according to FEMA. I come in here, you saw a red line, so I know I have to give this a description. We'll put a test for now. Uh, I can put in instructions. If I've been advised to put in instructions, the WIA text, the WIA long text, uh, one's 90 characters, this is 360. Uh, you won't be able to progress to the next page. Uh, if these go beyond the character limits, you will get a red bar and you will not be allowed to go into the next page. So very intuitive that you will know you are doing things correct as you go page to page. Here is where you can attach a, a resource. Uh, a URI URL to that resource is, is recommended. And then you'll put in a description. And that's how you can attach a file, uh, a sound file, record your own voice so it sounds nice and clear when it comes across the TVs. 
Then you go next, and this is your area. And here's your assigned cog. So I add that. It auto filled the area description for me. And now I can go to next. Here's the area. Now, if it's in a specific area within my cog border, okay, I can go in and I can draw a circle or I can draw a polygon. I can zoom in. You really want to get in there and make sure you're, you know, you're doing the right lines. I can clear them and start again. All sorts of flexibility. And we have a nice little feature called uh, neighboring cogs, which we utilize the CAP protocol. So if you want to send this to other cogs, uh, and if they have the CAP protocol, they can also be informed that you sent a CAP alert. So that's an interesting feature there. And now it's ready to go. So now if I want to preview, I'll close the wizard. And I want to preview the content. So I come down here and I say, oh, preview. Oh, okay, here we go. Here's what it's going to look like on the phone. Avalanche warning. Okay, yeah, that looks good. What is it going to look like on the TV? Avalanche warning. Okay, no typos. No, no, you know, you can review. Then basically you're good to go. You send the alert. It's that quick. Takes you to a live metric dashboard, which shows you where you sent it. Shows you the channels that you sent it, the time and the date, who sent it. Here are the channels, delivered, delivered, delivered. So I know it went out. Look We're receiving it here in the iPod lab as well, Gary. Okay, great. So go to the alert history and show those icons. So if I'm out of this metric view, and I just want to show you, you can cancel this. If right away it was a mistake, made a mistake in anything, you can cancel this immediately, or I can even update it. Go back to the alert and update it. And then at any time, I can come into the alert history tab, and you can see, here's my new latest alert that was sent, all green check marks. And then if I want to go in and review the details, I just click on it. I can cancel it. I can update it. Just to show you what update looks like, you can update. It takes you back. And you can then change your your information, whatever needs to be modified, and then send it update alert. So that is the nickel tour of desktop alert. We've made it as simple as possible. A few quick training sessions with us, and you'll be sending uh, iPose alerts with confidence. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Gary, I'm going to pass it over to uh, Kiera at the iPause lab to bring up the message viewer so we can have an additional confirmation. Um, looks like it's still scrolling across the TV there. Um, but stand by, Gary, I'm going to bring it back to you for screen share. Uh, Kiera, you should now have the ability to share your screen. All right. And we recommend the message viewer to uh, anyone and everyone. Uh, it works for the iPods lab environment. It's a great way to, uh, to see if what you're doing is correct. And yep, it's a good way to confirm that your test was successfully sent. And the top one there is the one that I just clicked on. And we can see it was successfully sent to the iPods lab with the green check there for WIA and EAS. And then, of course, we heard the audio, um, the audible EAS devices go off here in the lab as well.